Hello healers, my name is Ben and this is The Moss Report. I'm here today with my father, author and founder of The Moss Report, Dr. Ralph W. Moss. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Ben. So I understand that today you'd like to talk with us about aromatherapy. This is another topic that I really don't know much about. I'm looking forward to learning a few things from you. So what have you got? Well, the other day I came across a reference to something called forest bathing. And I was intrigued by this. I I'll thought it the, sounds fun. <laughs> I thought of the that? old Cialis ad, you know, with the two people in, in bathtubs sitting uh, side by side. Uh, I thought forest bathing would be like taking a bath in the forest. But it has nothing to do with that. It actually is a, it's a translation from a Japanese term uh, meaning immersion in the uh, environment of a forest. Hmm. Sounds lovely. So what was the article uh, claiming? That it had health benefit? Absolutely. And not just health benefit, but there was a profound effect on the level of the natural killer cells, also known as the NK cells, within a person. Hmm. And do those relate to fighting cancer? Absolutely. The natural killer cells, like the killer T cells and some of the other parts of the immune system, are essential for the person's own immune system's uh, resistance to the cancer. So anything that would increase your NK cells or natural killer cells would be a big plus. And amazingly, much to my surprise, my delight and surprise, it turned out that Japanese scientists since about 2004 have been exploring the beneficial health effects of just walking in the woods. Now, I'm a big fan of walking in the woods. I try to walk in the woods every day. I don't always achieve that. But even yesterday, I went out in, and we're having a, uh, a hot spell, like many parts of the country are, but still managed to sort of drag myself through, through, through the woods uh, for about two hours. Um, Ooh, and it's a nice hike. It is a very, very nice hike in a very wooded area with a lot of nature, you know, a lot of uh, birds and reptiles to, to look at in the area where I live. Um, and this is not unusual. I do this whenever I can, and I consider it a very important part of my own health regimen. But it was nice to see that it had already been validated scientifically for almost 20 years by Japanese scientists. The study that the Japanese did was specifically around the aromatherapy aspect of being in the woods or the entire experience or how do you even study something like that? So their studies were about the immersion of a person in the woods. It wasn't just about the aroma therapy aspect. They make the point that all the senses are involved. Aromatherapy was my next stop in terms of my own research on this, because if you think about the different senses that are engaged in walking in the wood, the one pertaining, of course, to the sense of smell is the aroma, especially the pine trees. So this study of immersion in the forest by the Japanese scientists sounds fascinating and looking forward to seeing the actual data. Um, were there other studies that validated their findings? Yes, there have been. There have been many, actually. Oh, okay. The interesting thing is that the effects go beyond just the natural killer cells. It also has a positive effect on blood pressure, on the cardiovascular disease, on all the non-communicable diseases. So in other words, it affects the metabolism. That's the total picture, and it's a strong, strong argument for our viewers to make sure that they go out into the woods and take walks whenever they can because 
uh, it doesn't cost anything, and it's extremely pleasant. And it also has the benefit of you getting a lot of steps. I only got in about 4,000 steps for my walk yesterday. I walk slowly. I'm not trying to set any world records in terms of speed. And I, I kind of look down on the people who come racing by me because I think they're missing out on a lot of wonderful emotions and knowledge that you get by just taking your time and observing and looking around you. But it's a holistic effect. So I don't want to just say it's only a benefit to natural killer cells. I think it's of great benefit to everybody, to all the senses. And they, the interesting thing, Ben, the forest bathing reduces the scores for anxiety, depression, anger, fatigue, and confusion. And it increases the score for vigor, showing the preventative effects on depression. That's massively important for cancer patients. It makes me wonder, is it only the way that psychologically being in the woods calms you that is having this beneficial effect? It's many things. But the thing that intrigued me, that really made me dive deeper into this whole topic, was that there is a physical effect this is what is, I find so intriguing. Plants, but especially pines and firs, these very aromatic trees that you find in most forests, put out chemicals called phytoncides. It's a terrible word, but it was coined in the 1920s, and the word has stuck in the scientific literature. Essentially, these are volatile oils. They, they, they have a known chemical composition, and they have a, a definite physiological effect on the body. Hmm. Okay, so a, yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at, phytocides. Huh? Phyton, phyton meaning plant, sides meaning kill, because they kill bacteria and viruses when you use them in the laboratory. Oh, very interesting. Like, I hate to say it, but like pine sol is what they put in a disinfectant to kill microbes? Is it? Correct. But also, the, one of the most commonly used anti-cancer agents is taxol and the related compound taxotere. And taxol is a drug that's derived from the bark of the Pacific yew tree. It was so popular when it, it first came out that the Pacific yew tree was in danger of going extinct because uh, Bristol-Myers Squibb was using so much of it to make Taxol. And then the hmm. French found a way to make Taxotere, a similar compound, out of the pine needles of the yew tree. So... The U, wow. it's one uh, of the most effective chemotherapy agents in the world. Wow, really? Had yes. no idea. Based off of pine needles. Pine bark and pine needles, yes. These are Amazing. used. These are used in treatment of many kinds of cancer. Taxol, taxotere, uh, many of our viewers will have heard of this. All right, so this is that study from the Japanese scientists. All right, visiting a forest but not a city increases human natural killer activity and expression of anti-cancer proteins. All right, so who are these folks? This is the top, top-notch group. It's from top schools, Nippon Medical School in Tokyo, Osaka University, and... Uh, Stanford University. All right. Uh, yeah. And um, there's a very uh, good summary of this trip that they took where they uh, took students and had them go through the forest and then they studied their blood basically before and after they went 
to the forest and to see what the benefit was compared to people who just were a, a, a control group where they just walked in a city. I assume it was Tokyo. Oh my gosh. So you're saying that they were able to find differences in their blood chemistry just after one hike in the woods? Well, a few days. It was some hikes over a period of, of two or three days. I see. Okay. That's immersion. Still, uh, yes. Um, wow. That's uh, astounding. I'll quote. Phytoncide concentrations in forest and city air were measured. You remember I said phytoncides were the chemicals produced by the pines and the firs that kill uh, bacteria. The forest bathing trip significantly increased natural killer cell activity and the number of natural killer cells, as well as some other anti-cancer uh, chemicals, and it decreased the concentration of adrenaline in the urine. This is measurable. The stress level went down. Mm -hmm. Here's what I found to be fascinating. I mean, it's all fascinating to me, but the, what I particularly found fascinating was that the increased natural killer cell activity lasted for more than seven days after the trip. Huh. Wow. Hmm. Really yeah. pays dividends to get out and do a little walk in the woods. I'll say. Would you say that based on what you read in this study, it would make sense for people to even just get a little time out in the woods or does it need to be more prolonged exposures like this to, to really get any meaningful benefit? What do, you, what do you think? There's another paper that shows that even going and walking in the woods for 15 or 20 minutes has a measurable effect. And then sitting and contemplating, just sitting, not walking, but just resting and sitting also has a measurable effect. And this is long lasting. In the woods. At least in the woods, not in the mm -hmm. city. It's a holistic experience. This is holistic medicine. Well, this is a perfectly wonderful and valid study. I take my hat off to, to the Japanese scientists who have innovated on this. It's not something that's gotten a lot of attention. It just hasn't excited the the standard conventional drug-oriented research and treatment community. This is aromatherapy in a sense. Of course, it's bigger than aromatherapy, but aromatherapy is a subcategory of, let's say, of this forest bathing concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear where you're going with that. So are there other aromas that have a benefit with these phytoncides or other chemicals that have a similar stimulating effect for the natural killer cells or have other anti-cancer properties? There are. There are. There still aren't a lot of very good quality studies. I will show some of them, but I, was, I wanted to say something else. You can also bring the forest to you. Okay. Oh, that's how, good. How do mm -hmm. you do it? Let me just stand up and get my props. Hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> so this is my diffuser. This is nice. the lowest cost way of getting the benefit that I'm talking about because looks it's, pretty simple. It is. It could be almost anything you have in your house that can hold these little reeds. These, this is the simplest way. You can buy expensive diffusers that are put out different color lights and everything. Well, you're welcome to, to do that, of course, but I go for the simple. And these were very inexpensive, these reeds. I think I got a hundred of them for about seven or eight dollars. And uh, I'll put six or eight of them into here. And then I'm going to fill this up with essential oils and a carrier oil, because the essential oils are very, very concentrated form of the plants. And I found online, after a lot of searching, I found a pack of six different essential oils that were from trees, pines and firs, and, and a few others like sandalwood and eucalyptus. So I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing around with those six different essential oils 
uh, at, to find the the combination that pleases me the most because I mm. intend to put this in my bedroom and mm -hmm. I think it will be uh, stimulating or possibly sedating. I mean, maybe it'll help lift my mood or help me to sleep. Uh, I have confidence now because of the papers that I am going to show you that it actually would be a very inexpensive, low, low toxicity uh, way of getting benefit out of plants that you wouldn't otherwise know about. And do you think that that would be enough to get some phytoncides into the air through the um, use of the oil and diffuser? I'm, I'm convinced that it is. The phytoncides like alpha pinene and beta pinene are detected in forest air, but almost none in city air. I'm quoting mm. from my, the paper here. Okay. And so I, I still think it would be better to go and walk in the woods, but I want to bump it up a step and bring mm -hmm. the forest to me where I could get the most use out of it. You said there are other papers that validate this idea. Yeah, do you want to show wanna, us some of them? I sure do. This is a study from Professor Ching Li, who's in the Department of Rehabilitation Medicine at Nippon Medical School in Tokyo. And I think he's seen as sort of the modern day founder of what's in Japan, what's called Shinrin Yoku or forest bathing. Mm. And he's written a lot of papers on this. And I just wanted to show this. It's a review article. Review articles are highly regarded in the medical field. They're a higher level of proof than randomized controlled trials. So you'll often hear, well, where are your randomized controlled trials? Well, actually, the review article is a, is a level above the RCT hmm. because it's a, it's a generalization, not just one experiment, but a generalization of the whole literature, explaining yeah. why they pick particular studies to concentrate on. Understood. And I think it would be a good idea for us to have a separate conversation about ways to evaluate these types of studies so that people can, you know, really go into their own research with that important knowledge. Yes. So what does this review article have to say? I'll quote from it. Forest bathing increases human natural killer cell activity. The number of natural killer cells and the intracellular levels of these anti-cancer proteins, suggesting a preventive effect on cancers. It reduces blood pressure and heart rate. It reduces stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol as detected in the saliva, another uh, hormone that's closely associated with the stress reaction. And this contributes to stress management. It balances the nervous system. It improves sleep. It reduces the scores for anxiety, depression, anger, fatigue, and confusion, and increases the scores for vigor, showing a preventive effect on depression. And then they say that Shinrin Yoku, which is forest bathing, may have potential preventive effects on non-communicable diseases like cancer and heart disease. Mm -hmm. The plants are putting these things out as protective devices for themselves. Mm -hmm. Their way, the pine tree is preventing other plants from taking over its environment or causing diseases of the, of the tree. It is a natural bit of self-protection. This is a review article on the effectiveness of essential oils, which are used in aromatherapy, in relieving cancer pain, a systematic review and meta-analysis. So it's, again, a very high level of achievement for these Italian uh, scientists uh, to have looked through the entire world literature on the topic and distilled that into a single paper that could then be uh, quoted and relied upon for future treatment. And what were their conclusions? They said that the present study 
demonstrate significant efficacy or effectiveness of the use of essential oils in the reduction of the intensity of pain associated with cancer. Mm. The, the P number is, is very, very low, which means that it has a very high level of reliability. When you have a low P number, what that's expressing is that the chance of this happening just by accident is extremely small. It's highly statistically significant. 70 to 80% of patients affected by tumors uh, report they suffer from cancer pain. This is obviously a topic that hasn't gotten nearly as much attention as it deserves, and we don't have a lot of ways to combat cancer pain. The authors state that the use of essential oils endowed with proven analgesic or painkilling properties can be the safest option in the frame of integrative medicine in oncology. Hmm. That's a bold statement. Correct. And that the aim of this meta-analysis is basically to look for the first time at the effects of aromatherapy in the reduction of cancer pain through clinical studies of any design. And then they give extreme amount of detail on how they conducted the study, which is all interest to specialists. But the basic underlying conclusions were that lavender was the scent that was selected most often for treating people for pain that was involved with uh, leukemia, uh, patients receiving uh, chemotherapy, and there were positive effects of using using that. I'm not going to take you through all of the details here. Looks like there's a lot of data there. There's a huge amount of, of data, and they go through each of the trials, which they really didn't need to do. I mean, really what they just have to do is is look at the you know, the conclusions. We'll make a link to the full article so that our viewers can look at at it for themselves. Mm -hmm. But they conclude uh, the meta-analysis shows statistically significant efficacy of the use of essential oils and the reduction of the intensity of pain associated with cancer. Wow. What, What more can you say? I mean, what's the downside? Nothing that I can see. Um, so I'm looking at this graph and I see a line and all of the green dots are to the left. Yeah. That means that those favor the use of aromatherapy in pain relief in different studies. Correct. And then the black diamond is the average yes. across those studies. Correct. So on average, yeah, the studies that looked at aromatherapy and pain relief showed favorable results. For for essential oils. Essential oils can be applied to the skin. They could be put in a person's bath. Aromatherapy would be be concentrating on the the smell of them as one would get from a diffuser. So there's Mm -hmm. different ways of applying it, but it's positive. It works. And this study doesn't go into the mechanism. It doesn't look at no. which molecules or have which no. analgesic properties and Correct. so on. It just is looking at the results of other independent studies that looked right. at the use of aromatherapy and pain among cancer patients. Right. Well, that's a very favorable outcome. Um, my mm-hmm. curiosity goes right to, you know, where are the molecules? Can we get more of them? <laughs> so for people who think it's just a placebo or it's just all in your mind or something. Well, of course, pain is in your mind in a, in a sense. So even if the essential oils like lavender only calmed the person down, it still would be a tremendous benefit. But it goes beyond just that. There's a physiological basis for it. This is a study from Katja Böhm, uh, who is with the University of Wittenherdecke in Germany, which is a... A university medical school that is more or less devoted to integrative and anthroposophical medicine. Mm-hmm. And, and that's uh, based on Rudolf Steiner's anthroposophical right. philosophy. Right. And so this um, 
is a famous medical school. Uh, many times they investigate questions that are not pursued by the standard medical schools in Germany or elsewhere. And this would have been pretty early in 2012. And the title of the paper is Aromatherapy as an Adjuvant or Additive Treatment in Cancer Care, a Descriptive Systematic Review. They showed that there are fairly long-lasting effects of aromatherapy massage, as well as short-term improvements for general well-being, anxiety, and depression, lasting up to eight weeks after treatment. Oh, well. So one massage or a couple of massages with some essential oils and Correct. noticeable lasting effects for weeks, huh? Mm, That's right. Okay. I like that. And there was improvement up to two weeks in anxiety and depression scores and better pain control, which we've discussed already, and uh, minimal adverse effects. This is another paper from Japan on the topic of forest bathing, and it contains some of the facts that I alluded to, that walking for 16 minutes on average and viewing the forest for 14 minutes on average had a measurable effect on the stress hormones, blood pressure, pulse rate, and the heart rate. Oh, wow. Really? Yes. I am surprised that it would be measurable 15 minutes out in the woods. And all of those things are affected. People could do this on their lunch hour if they could get to a, a forest or even a grove of trees. And so here's one, a randomized controlled trial for the effectiveness of aromatherapy in decreasing salivary gland damage following radioactive iodine therapy for differentiated thyroid cancer. Well, of course, this will be of great interest to people with thyroid cancer you can improve the situation with patients receiving radiation for thyroid cancer by adding in some aromatherapy. Hmm. And uh, This was an actual randomized controlled trial. Correct. Amazing. Isn't it, though? Yeah, and this is from Japan. No surprise there. And uh, let's look at what they say. Conclusion. In the present study... Our results suggest the effectiveness or efficacy of aromatherapy in the prevention of treatment-related salivary gland disorders. Mm -hmm. The patients in the inhalation of aromatherapy group inhaled this blended oil mm -hmm. for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they tested the salivary gland function before and after, Yeah, and it had a benefit. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I find this very bizarre. I, I guess I shouldn't because it's in a way just another way to administer a drug or to get a compound into the body by inhaling it. But I sort of don't equate inhaling some microscopic molecules of oil as having enough potency to have any meaningful effect, but clearly it does. It's very potent. It has an effect on the salivary glands. Uh -huh. So the the odor of the lemon and the ginger uh, makes you salivate. Huh. And that protects the, the glands during treatment. By the way, at many of the comprehensive cancer centers in the United States, there are integrative medicine departments, and many of them advertise at least that they use aromatherapy. So mm -hmm. it may be possible uh, for patients, of people watching this, to hook up with people at their own cancer center where they're being treated in order to get advice on what to do and wh what to use. This is a 2022 article from a good journal, Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine, and it shows that geranium oil that's pressed from common flowers, a uh, geranium plant, uh, has a beneficial effect for cancer patients who are receiving the drug tamoxifen. Mm. So there are possibilities here because, as I said, a lot of the anti-cancer agents are derived from plants and taxol and taxotere, 
some of the most um, commonly used forms of chemotherapy are derived from the yew tree. So we know that uh, there's nothing illogical about using this. But this is an interesting study because it showed that geranium oil affected and improved the cancer cell killing ability of the common drug tamoxifen. Oh, well, that's great news. Yeah. And this is applied in the same way. It was just an aromatherapy. Yeah. You're just inhaling it. Right. What would be the harm in trying that? And they also mention that uh, lavender ameliorates the influence of stress on the brain involved with the circadian rhythm of sleep. And then also bergamot, which is the flavor of Earl Grey tea. It's an herb that can minimize the symptoms of stress-induced anxiety, mild mood disorders, and cancer-related pain. So all of these studies reinforce each other, as far as I'm concerned, because they all are pointing in the same direction that aromatherapy actually works, and it works at the physiological as well as the psychological and emotional level. And this is a point that can't be repeated too many times because, you know, it's just a very, a very fundamental thing. Uh, finally, I have been, I have a study, this is in rats. I don't usually speak about animal experiments because, of course, there's uh, a big difference between how animals react to things than human beings. But I thought this was so fascinating that you could change the blood glucose level in animals, in test animals, by administering different forms of essential oils, because I believe that this has possible relevance to people like myself who struggle with um, elevated blood sugar. And they say the grapefruit odor greatly depressed the blood glucose curve. I, most scientific studies start with animal experiments, or they used to. I have a feeling, Ben, that it's working in some combination of the physical, the mental, and possibly even the spiritual. We can be guided by our own sense of smell, the limbic system, they call that. We can take some guidance in terms of the choice of things. Is there anything else you'd like to add about this topic before we wrap up? I think also that people should look for trained aromatherapists in their own area, and they might be able to find some even affiliated with their own hospital because there are more and more integrative medicine departments in the comprehensive cancer centers. So that kills two birds with one stone, as it were. But uh, there are also many people who are not medical doctors who have been, maybe they're nurses or they've been trained, especially in this area. So it's something that people should definitely explore. At the very least, it's going to be a pleasant experience uh, and an interesting one. So I strongly urge people to look into this further. Well, as always, thank you for that education and for all of your research. And for now, for the Moss Report, I'm Ben Moss. How are you healing today? Thank you for watching. We really appreciate all of the support. Please leave a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and visit themossreport.com. We wish you all the best for health and healing.